Outer Worlds 2 is a single-player open-world action RPG from Obsidian and is built on Unreal Engine 5. And with support for DLSS, FSR, and XCSS, as well as frame generation for NVIDIA and Intel, is your GPU up for playing it? Starting off with VRAM usage and at 900p low quality setting, the VRAM usage is pretty reasonable, needing less than 6GB all the way up to 1440p. That does bump up to 7GB at 4K, but overall very reasonable at the low quality setting. Bumping up the visuals to very high does increase VRAM usage, with now an 8GB card being recommended all the way up to 1440p, and for the best performance you'll want 10GB at 4K. Those numbers do increase a little bit, enabling ray tracing or frame generation, with the game maxing out in our testing at 11.5 gigabytes. In addition to reducing the VRAM usage, dropping down the visuals does give you a pretty massive increase in performance, with high giving you a pretty massive boost of 53% over very high, though the gains going down to medium or low are much smaller at 67% and 83%. In terms of visuals, very high obviously looks the best, with even the high setting losing out in vegetation and shadow details, with the lighting quality, shadows, and foliage reducing even more on medium and low. And depending on your GPU, those lower quality modes might be needed since at 1080p, very high quality settings, several entry-level cards are unable to achieve 30 FPS, so it is a pretty demanding game at these settings, and this is before including ray tracing. You can achieve 30 FPS on RTX 3060 Ti, which is similar to the console versions, but if you are looking for a better experience then you'll want to play at 60 FPS, which has much higher requirements, namely an RX 7900 XT or an RTX 5070 Ti. None of the cards, not even the RTX 5090, is able to hit 100 FPS in this game at 1080p at very high. Bumping the resolution up to 1440p reduces the number of 60fps cards down to two, namely the RTX 4090 and RTX 5090. There are still a number of cards that can achieve 30fps at this resolution in settings, with the two titans of yesteryear, the RTX 3080 and RX 6900 XT, able to achieve it. But for everybody with a less powerful card, or even these cards if you want above 30fps, you'll need to reduce down the settings and probably drop the resolution. This goes double if you are trying to play the game at 4K, with many cards achieving single digit frame rates. And basically nobody getting a playable experience with this game at 4K, with even an RTX 5080 barely being able to hit 30 FPS, and an RTX 5090 only achieving 48 FPS. The one bit of good news is that ray tracing doesn't really decrease this performance all that much, with the same cards still being able to achieve above 30 FPS. Though it does bottleneck the game at lower resolutions, so check out the link in the description for the full review and ray tracing tests. If you don't want to lower down your settings or just need more frames, this game does support all three major upscalers. And with the RTX 5090 at 4K, enabling the DLSS quality mode does give you an extra 44% better performance, roughly in line with what you would get by going down to the high quality preset and pushing you over 60 FPS. Though, if you are looking at frame generation, that could be over 230 FPS. Moving over to the RTX 5070 Ti and at 1440p, the story is very much the same, with the quality setting giving you basically 44% better performance and roughly in line with the high quality preset, and more importantly, giving you above 60 FPS, with that stretching up to 200 FPS with frame generation. This is roughly in line to what you'll get with an RX 9070 XT at 1440p, with the quality setting giving you 54% better performance, pushing it above 60fps, with the performance preset topping off at 100fps, and with the auto mission of frame generation on AMD in this game, that's kind of the limit. The 5060 Ti at 1080p follows the same story as the other Nvidia cards, 60fps with the quality setting and 200fps with frame generation. With the RX 9060 XT 8GB also achieving above 60fps at 1080p with the quality setting. With the Intel Arc B580 needing to use the performance preset to achieve 60fps, though you do have the option of enabling frame generation on Intel.